guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another cooking video. So today my mom and I are working together. We're actually in her kitchen and we're gonna be sharing with you some of her best holiday recipes, which I think would pretty much fill a book. If you guys don't know, my mom actually has her own channel and I will be linking it below. She does post kind of at random, right? Random. <laughs> random. Anyways, so she has so many recipes just from years of doing catering events and things for family and friends. She did all of me and my brother's weddings and she definitely needs to write a cookbook, I think. <laughs> So today's recipes are definitely more at an easy skill level, wouldn't you say? We're kind of... I would say. We're going to try to keep it that way so that you understand. Yes, yes. And also, we will tell you um, what alternative tools you could use if you don't have a stand-up mixer and things like that. And um, there is one recipe here that's been really highly requested that I had done a while ago, probably over a year ago. I think so. Something like that. And that is my mom's sticky buns. They are, in my opinion opinion the absolute best and they're relatively simple to do once you understand how to do them they are. so we're gonna be showing you that we're also going to be having some savory things today things that you could easily make for family and friends or enjoy at a gathering so I think that we're ready to go cheers Thanks. let's get started the first recipe that we're gonna show you today is one that I can honestly remember my mom making even as a little girl. It was definitely around the holiday times that she would make these pinwheels. And you're gonna go ahead and mix together four ounces of cream cheese, one fourth cup of ranch dressing, and a half cup of shredded cheese. It doesn't really matter what kind, you just want it to get to a creamy consistency. then you can literally use any type of filling you want to. We went for a little more of a veggie style filling, um, kind of down the line of veggie pizza, so some baby bell peppers and some green onions, some ham, and you can just really go crazy. I love bacon bits in these. You can also switch it up with different types of cold cut lunch meat, and just having that creamy, base makes everything really delicious. You can also use red pepper wraps. So you could have green and red wraps for Christmas time. You can add in spices. My mom did some fresh black pepper and some basil and you just put everything together. And then the key for these is to roll them up and put some saran wrap around them. And then you'll want to leave them in the refrigerator for a few hours. Overnight is best but um, if you only have a few hours, that works as well so that they're nice and firm and cold and easy to slice up. So the whole reason that we went ahead and made these pinwheels is because we wanted to put together a charcuterie board. And I believe I'm saying that right. You guys can correct me in the comments if I'm saying it wrong. So these are a bunch of the different things that we used and you can really use anything you want to. And I have some serious charcuterie board inspiration coming for you at the end of this video. My mom did a catering event for a family friend and she did a charcuterie board that was the size of a table. It is huge, you're gonna love it. So stick around to the end so you can check that out and get some ideas if that's what you're planning to do this holiday season um, for whoever you're celebrating Christmas with. My mom had a couple tips for you guys when you're planning out your board. So she said you wanna use at least eight different items and you also wanna think down the line of things that would be sweet and things that would be salty, even going down the spicy alley if you like things like that, fruit, cookies, 
I mean, you name it, you can really put together a lot of things. And I think the more that you have on the board, the more interesting it looks and the more fun it is to eat. Dips are also a great thing. And then another little tip she had for you is to make sure that you use things that are different sizes. So you have the small blueberries, you can use salted nuts and then larger cookies or um, different slices of meat and folding them different ways. Just have a lot of fun with it and make it your little art project. Something else I love about this idea is you can go ahead and make a bunch of the ingredients yourself to put together your board, or you can simply pre-purchase a lot of things and nobody will ever know because it looks so homemade and so put together. Okay, so on to those famous sticky buns. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to put together four cups of very warm water along with two tablespoons of yeast and one tablespoon of your sugar. You're just gonna let that sit and kind of let it get a little bit bubbly looking. Um, my mom said that she does sometimes stir it around just a little bit while it's activated. After your yeast is activated, you wanna add in your cup of softened salted butter, and then you're gonna whisk up four room temperature eggs and dump those in as well. Next, you will start mixing. Now, you can do this by hand, and my mom said that the best thing to do by hand is start out with a wooden spoon, and then as the dough gets thicker, use your hands in a bowl. So it's easy to do by hand. You don't have to have a mixer, but a mixer does make it go a little faster. So now she's adding in about, she said seven cups of flour. You're also going to want to add in your one cup of instant potatoes. And I think that's the secret ingredient in this, to be honest with you. I feel like that's what makes the dough so yummy. And you're just gonna keep adding and allowing the mixer to mix together. She said since she does have a stand-up mixer, after about seven cups, she switches to her hook, which you're gonna see here in a minute, her dough hook, and it just helps to mix things a little bit easier. After that, she adds in the rest of the flour. You're also gonna wanna make sure that your salt is in there, your sugar, um, all of the dough ingredients are mixed in with this. And then whenever it's kind of pulling away from the bowl or if it's getting a little bit firmer as you're mixing it with your hands, that's whenever she gets it out of the bowl and kind of combines it a little bit and then puts it in the bowl to rise. You want to cover it up. She likes to use saran wrap. Some people use a dish towel, but I know my mom has used saran wrap for years whenever her bread dough or any type of dough is rising. And you'll just want to go ahead and set it on your stove top as your oven preheats. Now to make the sticky part, you're going to take a 13 by 18 pan, and this recipe actually makes two of them, and you're gonna put a stick of butter on the pan and throw it in the oven, let it melt up a little bit. Once it's melted, pull it out, 
and you're going to put your brown sugar all over the bottom of the pan. Once you have the brown sugar all spread out on top of the butter, you're gonna mix together your vanilla and your water and sprinkle that through. And then you're gonna stir everything all over the pan to make a gooey, sticky goodness. The next step while your dough is rising is you're going to make your frosting for the top. So you're gonna put together your powdered sugar, your vanilla, butter, and water until it's combined and looks nice and creamy. Once your dough looks a little puffy, and my mom said that it doesn't have to rise a whole lot, she said this dough is pretty forgiving, you can go ahead and take the cover off and divide the dough in half. We're gonna give you a couple ideas of what you can use this dough for. You don't have to put it in just a sheet, um, but you're gonna go ahead and take that half and stretch it out into the shape. I don't really know what you would call it. I guess a long rectangle, maybe something like that and then just get it all even before you coat it with some butter. So she just softens butter and takes her hands and puts it all over the top of it. Next, you're gonna go ahead and shake, liberally shake on some cinnamon. And I know my mom said she often uses a lot. So you definitely want to go extra on the cinnamon. After the cinnamon, you wanna give a nice coating of brown sugar. Then she takes a pizza cutter and cuts it into 15 rolls. So as you can see, a visual is super helpful for this. And if you're gonna make this recipe, you may wanna come back and watch this just to kind of be able to eyeball and make sure that your proportions are correct. The first pan she did in kind of the traditional manner, and then this pan, we did something a little bit special. I know she does this around the holidays where she'll just get a can of pie filling. You can use blueberry, which you'll see in a second, cherry, strawberry, whatever you wanna use, and she kind of twisted them a little differently just so that they could hold the pie filling. And then she wanted to put together these crocs that she had picked up for some friends to be able to pass out some of her delicious sticky buns um, as gifts. So I think this is such a great idea. And again, she went ahead and twisted them in, um, I don't know, a little, not so much a roll, but a twist so that they could hold some pie filling as well.
So after they're all put on the sheet, you want to let them rise for again about 20 minutes before you pop them in the oven. And then this is what they look like when they come out and you better believe it, the house smells incredible. Now one other little note my mom had was don't ice these until they've cooled for maybe about 20 minutes as well because the icing will melt and it will run all down. If you want the icing to sit on top and look really pretty, it definitely helps to let them cool a bit. Okay, so like I said, I had to include this footage that my mom did because when it comes to food, my mom is honestly a genius. She just has a way of making food and art and I love it so much about her. Um, she just does such an excellent job, especially whenever she's working at events. So this was an event that she did and she filmed it and she said, oh, you should show them um, the huge charcuterie board that was requested for this event. So it was literally the size of a table. As you'll see at the end, it's just huge. So enjoy, I hope that it inspires you if this is what you're putting together for the holidays. Thank you guys so much for watching today. If this inspired you, don't forget to give this video a like. If you're new here, I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys in my next video.